So in today's episode, we have this Chevy Silverado in for a full paint correction and a one year ceramic spray coating. Now, yeah, we're doing a full correction, but we're not doing a typical full ceramic coating. Why not? Well, that's because that's what the customer chose. You know, when it comes to polishing services and ceramic coatings, we don't sell them, we offer them. So if a customer wants it, great. We give them the options, we give them the prices, and we go from there. But if a customer is not interested in it, it's not up to me to try to sell it to them. I am not a salesman. I am a tradesman, if anything. I am a business owner, but also a laborer within my own business. And I know some people who are entrepreneurs are gonna say, no, that's not the way you're supposed to do it. You know what? It's not up to you, it's up to me. I'm making money, I have a successful business, I'm doing it the way that I see fit. So what we're gonna do to the truck is do our pre-wash, our contact wash. It does have water spots. It has some pretty bad swirls on it. Hopefully the paint is forgiving, especially with this color. And then we're going to do a two to three step paint correction, whatever it takes to get it to the level that we need. So we're shooting for 90%. Of course, this is a work truck. It's going to have defects in it that are not going to come out no matter what. It wouldn't be wise to try to dig out everything 100% because of possible thinness on the clear coat. So we take measurements when there are deeper defects, that way we know how far to go. If you're interested in any of the tools or the products, everything will be linked down below. Enter code Miranda10 for 10% off at Car Supplies Warehouse. And if you are enjoying the videos, which I hope you are, consider subscribing and clicking that bell so you don't miss stuff. So let's get started on the truck. So as we take a look at the truck, it's definitely dirty. And if we look at the paint, it's a little hard to tell, but you can see it's definitely swirly. And on the surface here, we do have some water spots. I don't think that's going to be extremely difficult to get out, but we'll see. I say that without even, you know, polishing the paint or knowing anything, but, but we shall see just from experience alone. I can tell that the water spots are pretty light. So we'll, we'll see what, what happens. Here, we can see that the water spots are a little heavy. It's mostly on the top surfaces. I don't see too much of it on the sides. So as far as pre-washing goes, we have our IK foamer. I have super foam from Kosh Kemi in there. That is their high pH uh, shampoo. Basically it can be used as a snow foam, a pre-wash, and we can use it as a shampoo also. We're gonna use that as our pre-wash or our shampoo. Now uh, the dilution ratio for that is, is crazy. I put too much solution in there actually. So I'm going to water it down because I want more of a runny solution for our pre-wash. So I'll do that. And then we're going to use this shampoo to tackle some of the water spots, CarPro D-Scale. So this is an acidic wash and it can clean really well, but also handle some water spots. And we'll see what it can do with those water spots. This will be the actual shampoo that we wash with. Now you could switch it up. You could foam with this first, letting it dwell, but I do want the agitation. So I don't want to just uh, foam it on and rinse it off. I want to agitate it. So that's why I'm using this as the shampoo. Good, even coverage. There's a lot of heavy tar back there. We're gonna have to use a tar remover. So this is going to start the washing process. It's going to dissolve and soften any particles. And that way it will be easily rinsed off the paint and that can remove 80 to 90% of any of the damaged material or grit and grime and traffic film that's on the paint. It is going to dissolve it away and pull it away from the paint so it's easily rinsed away. 
So you can have this solution as thick or runny as you want. Some do like a runnier solution, which I actually do. I, I now kind of have switched over to wanting a more runny solution, so I'll just have to keep diluting that. But actually this, this consistency seems to be pretty good. And you can see how it pulls away, leaving the paint with just a thin, thin film. You can kind of see there, see very, very thin. That's not going to swirl or damage your paint. That will easily be removed with the next contact wash. Now you can choose to either pre-rinse or just use that solution right on the paint. However, if you are working in full sun and it is hot out, rinse the paint first. That's what cools it down. Don't worry about diluting the pre-wash on the paint because that is so negligible. It really doesn't make that big of a difference. After the pre-wash, we noticed in the back fender here, there was a ton of tar. I was able to actually pressure wash a lot of it off because it, uh, it was pretty fresh. But it's over all the paint, the plastic, a little bit of that back bumper there. Yeah, and it was all over the tailpipe. We're gonna polish this tailpipe also. So we're using Gion Tar. That will dissolve the tar. And if there's any more left, the clay barring will remove some of it, but again, if there's any more left, we'll just use the Gion tar again. But this is great for dissolving tar and removing it safely without having to scrub excessively. And give it about a minute, and then you can start gently, gently removing the tar with the towel. And then we're gonna wash this anyway, but this area is gonna be nice and clean because we already kind of contact washed it. It'll remove it off the plastics, chrome, paint, the metal. And I think we're gonna need some more way down here. But that will remove it. And then, whoa, that's bad. But you can see it dissolves it. Of course, you don't use that on the paint, obviously. Same on this side. It is really bad. We do have a lot of construction here, so it's bound to happen. Now I'm using Iron Decon. I'm using the Rapid Decon from Hybrid Solutions Pro. And I'm going over all the chrome emblems and I'm going over all of these emblems and the lettering and all the cracks and crevices. And uh, basically I want to clean them because this does have a cleaner built in. It's not just an iron decon, it's also a cleaner. And I want to flush out as much of the particles as possible and aid even with the iron particle removal. So I'm doing that to all of the emblems and chrome pieces, the grill, all of that. And I am doing it to the bottom portions of the paint as well. The paint is actually surprisingly smooth, which is good. And you don't need to use Iron Decon every single time, despite what some people may say. Use it when needed. You don't just use it arbitrarily. So I am using it on all these emblems and stuff because I'm sure there is some minerals in there, some iron deposits, and this can help with some minor water spots and junk in all the emblems. As far as wheels and tires, I'm gonna use the same Rapid Decon on the wheels. And I have some of the Jay Leno tire and rubber cleaner. This stuff is really strong. And I'm almost out of it. 
but you can see how it pulls junk off the tires immediately. Not a ton of iron deposits on the wheels, however. Definitely some on the inside. You can see the inside is turning purple, but not so much on the outside. So pre-washing is done and I mean already the paint is really clean so that does a great job it's actually nothing on here at all like it doesn't leave any finger swipes nothing I'm sure towards the bottom it does but we're going to use the CarPro D scale and hopefully that will take care of some of those water spots and then of course we'll use a water spot remover compound polish do whatever we need to do to remove those water spots At least it's not like super hot today. Yeah. So with the truck clean and dry, that descale removed, I would say, 90% of the water spots. You're left with these like harder water spot stains here that etched in just a little bit. But overall, it did an excellent job. Now, that's not going to be a complete water spot removal type of product, but use it when you need to and see how well it works. With water spot removal, what you're trying to do is get those minerals off the paint. And you're going to have to do that in layers. So chemical, of course, first to remove those deposits, and then it may leave a little ring on the paint that you can then subsequently compound or polish off. Yeah, this looks great. The paint feels so smooth. So now we can go on to drying all the cracks and crevices, inspecting the paint, and see what else we need to do. So with the truck pulled in, we're gonna look at the paint. And yeah, you can still see some water spots there. Most likely those are just harder etched spots and we do have some on the chrome. So let's use some more chemical to dissolve those spots, get them cleared up, and then we'll start polishing the paint. Let's take a look around the sides of the paint. We see a little bit of water spotting there. Some on the chrome as well. And we do have some on the glass. I don't think the water spots are incredibly oh, hard. Come see. Oh wait, I gotta, I gotta wow. wipe this off. Okay. So just compounding alone will take it off, you think? Yeah, and All cleared right. up the paint like perfect. Oh, good. Oh, maybe, maybe we, uh, we're fortunate with this one. With the Papa Cut. Oh yeah, using Papa Cut and a microfiber. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. All right. Wow. Yeah, you know what? These water spots aren't hard. They're coming right out with just a hit of the chemical. I came right out with, I didn't do super slow passes. I wonder that D-scale probably got the majority of it. And this is just light etching. Mm -hmm. Because it came out 100%, 100%. Like not even, oh yeah, that made a big difference. Just look at that. Just look at it. It's amazing. Just look at it. Now, we're using the eraser gel. We also have the Max Shine 
water spot remover. I would say these are about, about on par. I still think this is really strong, but we'll use some of this as well. Now, the test is gonna be on the glass. We can polish the glass. We have Clarity Cream from PNS. We also have CarPro Sira Glass, which is designed for water spot removal on glass and polishing. So when we get to that, we'll show you. But Wifey is compounding with Papa Cut and a microfiber disc, and that is clearing it up really well. We'll show you the results. not touching the scratch though it's too deep yeah but man this it did a great job mm -hmm. so here's one hit with papa cut and that really wasn't even going that heavy and then that's the results that's impressive a little bit of haze but we're going to polish that out after but that cut out i'd say about 80 percent maybe maybe more that's what it was before that's what it is now some of those deeper defects, we're not gonna try to get out because it's just too deep. Even with our paint correction, we still want to preserve clear coat. So those results right there, that's awesome. So that's our goal, is to get the paint to looking like this. Some areas can look better than others because you know this is a high impact area, of course, being the front, and some of the lower sections are also high impact areas. So we're gonna try to get those as best as we can, those lower portions, but those end up being really bad and again, if paint readings are thin, you don't want to go overboard on that. But overall, I'm loving the results we're getting. That's what it looked like before. That's our goal. So with this corner here, I had to hit it with the water spot remover, the chemical, and then we compounded it with the microfiber disc. And this is what we're looking at now. Now, if you look really close, you can see how it actually etched into the paint a little bit, the water spots. Now, I'm gonna take some measurements and make sure that we have plenty of clear here. If it's starting to get around four mils and under, I'm not gonna go any further on that, that is just too much. There's some other little other, there's some other little light defects here, but I'm not concerned about that. Overall, look of this is awesome. I'm really thinking now we're getting close to 90%, which is awesome. So after taking some readings all around the truck, we are reading around four and a quarter to under four mils. And here where we did compound, we're already below four mils. Where we didn't compound on this side of the fender, already 3.52, 348, 380, 372. Now, we haven't even compounded here yet. We, we did up here. The hood seems to be okay in, in many areas, reading four mils and up, but this fender and some of the doors that we're doing very, very thin. So what that means for a paint correction is we're doing one moderate hit with compound. That's it. We're not gonna try to dig out any more than that. Some areas may only get 80%. That's as far as we can go. That's the limit. In fact, next time, I'm gonna have to tell the owner the paint is thin on this. If you get any more scratches or swirls or water spots or anything like that, then we really can't go any further. We're just gonna have to do, say, an all-in-one polish or a light paint enhancement, and that's it. Because at least that doesn't take off as much clear coat as paint correction does. So it's good to have one of these little guys. This guy here connects to any phone and you can get it at Car Supplies Warehouse. You can get other budget ones that work just as well for around 100 bucks. This is around 200. Either one will work, but this is nice because you can actually save the readings on your phone and all of that. 
can take screenshots and show you know your customer or just pull this out quickly and show your customer the paint readings when you're getting into polishing and paint correction you really need one of these to be safe if you are cutting paint without this and by cutting i mean compounding that's just a term that detailers use you need to get one of these it's very important because this helps you to gauge how far you're going to go not just by looks alone and not just by the customer saying i want that scratch gone this will save you if you burn through a panel because you're really trying to please the customer and get everything out because they said so, that's where you can really run into problems. So when it comes to paint correction, any type of polishing, once you really start getting into polishing, invest in one of these. It can save your business actually. But overall, look how nice it's coming out already. Look at that. And that's just compounding. Polishing it, just a light polish. And again, the polishing is not really going to remove clear coat, it's just refining. It's very, very, very minor polishing that we're gonna to have to do because the Papa Cut is a diminishing abrasive and it finishes down really, really well. So as we look around, oh, look at that. Look how nice it looks. So yeah, we, we can't worry about those, those other deeper lines. We can't go any further. The paint is too thin. This is what we're shooting for. Even those deeper ones, we can't, we can't go any further. It's, it's too thin. So my fellow detailers, be careful. Don't just follow what you see on social media as far as perfecting paint. Those guys, of course, know what they're doing. They're taking, sometimes they take risks in doing that, but we don't know the full story. We don't know how they've communicated with their customer and the paint condition that they're working on. If they've taken measurements and they've dictated that there's plenty of clear coat to be able to do a full paint correction, almost 100%, that is up to them. But that is not across the board what you should be trying to achieve every single time. What detailers really need to show, and I know it's they're, they're trying to show the best of the best of their work to gain customers, but I'd rather gain the trust of a customer and let them know that I can't go any further on their vehicle than try to show off and get 100% and risk burning through or really damaging the clear coat. Cutting that much into the clear coat, even though it's 100% defect free, you've now compromised the clear coat and it's not gonna last as long. Sure, you can put a ceramic coating on it, but no, that's not going to bring back the paint. Ivan LaCroix is a paint expert, he knows, and really we take a lot of tips and advice from him. And when it comes to compounding and, and polishing, when you remove clear coat, you cannot put that back other than respraying, which costs thousands. You want to be very careful when it comes to paint correction. Only cut what you need and communicate well with the customer. Take your paint measurement readings, document it well, and stay humble. So my side is definitely worse. I'm having to actually chemically hit all the water spots first. So that's with the chemical, and I haven't touched that yet. It's still really bad, but it's, it's cutting the water spots by 50%, and then I'm compounding them to get it to that level. So you can see, if you look really close under these lights, you can see the water spot etching. But I can't go any further, it's too thin. So I'm compounding, working my way down this way, but I'm using the chemical first to get the majority of the water spots. So both of these are actually working really well. Apply it, hand apply it, it dries very, very quick. Have a damp towel and a dry towel. So the damp towel you use to kind of neutralize it and the dry towel to buff it all away. You don't want to let that stuff dry completely on the paint. So the compounding is coming out really good. We have pretty much cut everything. I have to get up onto the roof and cut the roof, but everything is now cut and it's looking great. Now we're tackling the glass. You can see some pretty nasty water spots on the glass, but a little bit of the water spot remover, we're using either that 3D gel or the Max Shine one, actually doing a good job at removing the water spots just a little bit of residue left. So the water spots themselves are actually coming out and it's, it's clearing up. It's actually looking really good. That's just, that's just some residue. It's taken a lot of work to get it off the glass. Of course, glass is harder 
So you have to really be aggressive on the glass with either the chemical or using clarity cream and a microfiber disc that helps as well. But overall, it's looking good. Look how nice the paint looks now. And that's just cut a light polish, just a finish polish. And then we're gonna use Phoenix EOD, their immortal spray coating to lock it all in. So now we are on to polishing. This is very quick, very light, nothing major. We're using Meguiar's M210. I know I haven't used that in a while, but it is still great stuff. Using a black soft pad and just going over it quickly, lightly, and it's just getting rid of any of the haze left over from the microfiber disc. Now, look at the paint. Crisp. Oh, it looks so good. So I'm working on the glass. We do have some water spots and some grossness here to contend with. And this is pretty easy. This will actually kind of polish right out. But I did that side, the driver's side already, using Clarity Cream and a microfiber disc, which gets gunked up pretty quickly. Oh, hi, enjoying your food? Scaredy cat, ignoring me. This side was just done, and look at that. Crisp all the way to the edges. Mmm, that's good stuff, right? All right, this glass is turning out great, so all of the water spots are removed. I'm just making sure that all of the glass is hit properly, and, oh, that's just residue up there. And uh, we're gonna hit back here as well, because it does have some water spots. You can see it kind of stifles the clarity in the paint. I mean, the glass, it's coming out really good. Not bad at all. Oh, hi. Hi. 